Head to your favorite big box store and grab a tension rod that is one inch in diameter and has an approximate stretching range of 48 to 84 inches. And while you are there, pick up a pool noodle. Lay the pool noodle flat on a table. Using a yardstick, draw a straight line across the top of the noodle with a marker. Take a sharp pair of scissors and cut a slit through the entire side of the pool noodle using the line that you drew. Then take a, the tension rod and push it through the cut and into the center of the noodle. Next, take faux floral stems in your favorite spring colors and cut the stems to about one inch below the bloom. Starting with your larger flowers, simply poke the short stems into the pool noodle. They will stay secure and no glue should be needed. Add additional larger sized blooms as well as faux plant foliage that you can tuck beside or under a flower. Once you get the larger flowers set, start to fill in with smaller blooms as well as wandering flowers. Fill your entire pool noodle with glorious flowers. Find some styrofoam Easter eggs on sticks. You can find these at the dollar store. Snap the wood stick a couple of inches below the egg and poke the egg into the pool noodle. These eggs are wonderful for filling in areas of the pool noodle that might not be covered by flowers. Take it a step further and glue some solid colored plastic eggs to the pool noodle using a hot glue gun. Follow the instructions for your tension rod and adjust the length to fit between two cabinets in the kitchen above your sink. Your tension rod garland is a perfect way to decorate for spring and for Easter. I hope this inspired you to create your own Easter garland using a tension rod, faux flowers, and a pool noodle. First, we're going to need a shower rod, but we've got to make sure it's expandable. Go ahead and put it in about chest level and set it up, not too tight, but just enough to hold it as we decorate it. Grab some garland ties. You can get these 10 for a dollar. We're going to start with some garland, and we're going to use those ties to hold it in place. You don't have to go all the way to the edge of the shower curtain, just enough. It's a little bit okay if some white is showing. And then we're going to take that garland and just start wrapping it all the way around. Now, once you start wrapping, there's going to be some white showing. Don't worry about that. I promise we're going to cover it later. But go ahead and just keep going all the way over. And once you get to the middle, if you need more, use that garland tie and start and end a new one right there. And then just keep wrapping all the way to the end. Once you get that wrapped up, we're going to take some bigger garland and we're going to let it hang over a little bit, maybe about 12 inches on the side. Using another garland tie, we're going to tie that down and hold it in place. Now this one, we're not going to wrap as much as the first one. We're just going to let that hang loose. This is what's going to give us some volume on the shower rod. So go ahead and wrap it up, but again, keep it loose and let it hang over the sides. That way it adds a little bit more on the decor. Now we're going to grab some fairy lights. We want to put these on before we add any other decorations. We can start just wrapping it all the way around. On these, I had to use two of them, so I started in the middle on one and wrapped it till I got to the end. I want to make sure that light goes all the way to the bottom of the hanging garland. Next, we're going to grab some little cherries or beads that go on the end, and we're going to wrap those up also. Keep it loose. We don't need to make it too tight. Let it hang in a few spots if you need to. Let's take some ornaments and some pipe cleaner, and we're going to put those ornaments right through and put it in the middle. Let's take a black, a gold, and let's even add a red one to it. We're going to put these on and twist time so they don't move around. But then what we're going to do is take this and add this so we can put some volume onto our archway. You can take these ornaments and add them anywhere and everywhere, whatever your heart's desire. Just go ahead and fill in the gaps. Now it's time to add some poinsettias and some ribbons. Put those anywhere you want, just as long as they look good to you. This is your house, and you want it to make it look good good. I'm going to put these on and these are nice. They clip right on, easy to install. Now it's time to add the final decor. I found this wonderful ribbon, extra large. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Once I get that secured, now it's time to loosen it by twisting the rod and then we're going to raise it up into place. See, we put it together when it was down low, easy to work with. And then we can raise it out of reach and that way we won't hit our head on it. Once we get it up there and installed, look how beautiful that turned out. And here's the fun thing. When the lights go down, you can see those fairy lights and they look great. What a wonderful decor to add to inner entry in your house. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did making it. 
For today's project, I'm going to head down to my local hardware store. I'm going to grab some closet poles that expand. I'm also going to grab some brackets. I got a great idea what I'm going to use these for. These poles are really cool. One is larger than the other, but on the end, I've got a cap with a screw. I need to take that off. Now I'm going to go inside the house, measure with these poles, put them together from floor to ceiling and mark the height of my ceiling. Then I need a drill bit for that screw hole. And what I'm going to do is I need to put these two together. So I'm going to mark it exactly the height I need. And I need a pre-drill. When I go through these, what I'm going to do is get it through. And then I'm going to attach it back again with the screw. This is going to be perfect size that I need. Once I get this all put together, the next step is I'm going to take the smallest drill bit I can find and pre-drill. Now, this is a self-tapping screw. Do you see it's got a little drill bit on the end? It's perfect for metal poles. Don't push too hard, but you're going to put that first screw in. Just let it go, but don't go all the way because we're going to put that bracket on and slide it into place. Then we can take a pencil and mark exactly where our next screw needs to go. We can go ahead and pre-drill that also and put the screw in, but we need to take it back out because we're just making the hole. Put the bracket in. Again, like we did before, slide it right into place as it clamps there. And then we're going to go ahead and put the screw in. Now, don't push too hard. Just let the drill do its job. Once we get that first one in, we're going to put the second one, but this one's going to be at a slight angle. We're going to do that. Mark the hole just like the first one and put the screw in and make it secure. Let's head on inside now. We're going to put that bracket that comes with the poles into the ceiling. These are white, so it matches the ceiling. And then we're going to pop it into place. It's actually going to be really secure all the way to the floor. Now, let's take some twine because we're going to hang some plants, but we're going to do this ourselves. We're going to put a knot in a nice big loop. You can just go ahead and make this loop any size you want from big to small. Make sure that knot is secure. And then what we're going to do is take it, fold it up just like you see in the picture right here. And then we're going to give it a little twist right at the end of that first inside loop. Take your plant and we're going to place it right on top of where the strings cross. Now take that top loop, fold it up and over and back through again. Give it a little tug and we're going to pull some of that slack out. Then take that top loop and fold it over the plant. With the little side magic right here, we're going to pull it over and back through again and then go ahead and take all that slack out slowly but surely and watch this. It's going to pull against our pot and it's going to hang really nice. Look at that. I can do with all of those and I made my own hanging plants. Once I hang all of these up, make them secure and straight, and it looks great hanging right in the corner. It was actually a pretty dull corner to begin with, and now I've got some plants hanging up right inside. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. Thank you for watching Home Talk, and we'll catch you next time.